Hello, my audience. Welcome back to Dr. Chao's YouTube channel. In this channel, I'm going to interview our Howard County Public School System graduates who graduate from our school system. I want them to share their experience, give some advice to our incoming high school students. I hope their experience and advice will be beneficial to our incoming school, high school students. Today, we are welcoming Jeff Du, who graduated from River Hill High School in 2020. He will join Duke University and he ha will have a double major economics and statistics. Let's welcome Jeff Du. Hi, Jeff, could you have a short self introduction? Yeah. So, hi, everyone. I'm Jeff. Like Dr. Wu said, I graduated from River Hill this year. I'm going to Duke to study economics and statistics with the goal of eventually entering the finance industry. So, in high school, I experimented with a lot of different fields. So I did track, I did debate, chess, acapella, community volunteering, et cetera. And I really just look forward to talking about all those things in addition to my experiences in high school. Thank you very much, Jeff, for taking time to speak with me. So my first question for you, what was your biggest, biggest challenge in your high school senior year? How do you overcome that? Yeah, so I think the biggest challenge by far was definitely balancing the high school experience with the demands of college applications because college applications require a lot of writing and a lot of preparation and you know you want to make sure that all of that's good and all of it's edited that it's reviewed by people that you trust and that takes a lot of time and honestly high school is about you know the experience having fun while doing other things you want and it's you sometimes lose motivation to, you know, just sit down for a few hours and just write some essays. So I think how I overcame it or how I mitigated it was at least just starting early. So I started in the summer writing my essays with my common app in addition to supplementals. And I think that also having really trusted people that you like trust who know you very well to contribute feedback because a lot of people seek feedback from everyone. Like they could possibly find but really that just dilutes your own voice and that just sort of makes your writing less authentic so i think i would recommend finding a few trusted people that you know really know you well so they can buy great feedback and just in general make your essays really stronger so it's kind of you need to concentrate and start well, that, early. yeah yeah it's definitely motivating thing. so what was your biggest challenge in your whole high school year and how do you overcome that yeah, so I think the biggest challenge of my whole high school career was definitely balancing the struggle of, you know, wanting to do so many different things versus, you know, making your time and your health a priority. So I think we always hear this notion that, you know, doing more is better, that, you know, in high school, one should do everything as possible. So they should do, you know, sports, music, volunteering, and patients, etc. But, you know, we never really realized that it's really important for your mental health and just for your success in general. If, you know, you just focus on a few things that you're really passionate about and just sort of drop the other things that, you know, just take up your time. Can you tell me what was your biggest challenge in your whole high school year? How, how do you overcome that? Yeah, so I think the biggest challenge of my whole high school was basically the struggle of, you know, wanting to do so much versus, you know, valuing my time and commitment and my mental health as a whole. So in high school, we always hear this notion that, you know, doing more is better, that we should do as much as possible, whether it be with sports, music, volunteering, internships, competitions, etc. But we never really realized that, you know, doing all these things really takes a toll on your mental health and your success because, you know, you don't have enough time to really balance out all your commitments and focus on them properly. And I think this is something I struggled immensely with with my junior year because I tried to be an overachiever and I overloaded on AP classes. I did the internship on top of the my extracurriculars and you know I spent basically every weekend just at various competitions for my extracurriculars and I think it definitely was really stressful and looking back on it I definitely should have you know focused on a few things and not tried to do so much and as a result I think I would have done better in the few things that I uh, was really passionate about mm -hmm. while also you know valuing my sanity and valuing my mental health and just being a more healthy person overall and I think that's really important to just above all value your health over I see everything else. Thanks for sharing that. So if I'm a high school student I said I want to try everything because I don't know which, I, which one I'm good at which one I'm really interested in. What's your advice for them? 
because there's a possibility yeah. to try to explore everything and put a lot of emphasis and energy on everything. Yeah, so when you when freshmen enter high school, that's when I really recommend that, you know, you explore your interest. Of course, you might not have a really good sense of what you want to do, but I think freshman year and also the first two years in general, you know, just find your, do some exploration, find what you're really interested in. But once it comes to, for example, junior and senior, year, and just in general, when you have more commitments, you really have to pick and choose between, you know, which ones do you really value more and which ones do you really like and enjoy over others. And I think at that point, you have to, you know, make the sacrifices to do what uh, you really like instead of just spreading your talents throughout. I, I see. Okay, thank, thank you. So let's talk about extracurricular activity. So do you have any special to share? Yeah, so I think a great program that HGPSS offers is the GT Research Program, which is includes independent research and inter-mentors. So I really think it's unique because it's very unorthodox. It's not like a traditional class where, you know, you have lectures, you do homework, you study for exams. You know, you get to choose your field of study. You get to, you know, do things that are totally independent, such as, for example, in my junior year, like I mentioned, I did, a, uh, I did an internship on uh, internship and I interned in an immigration law firm and I got to see firsthand basically the legal process. So for example, I got to do a lot of cool things such as like going to court, interviewing professionals, presenting at student leading, leadership conferences, etc. And these are, you know, experiences that I would never have would have gotten in like a normal traditional class. And I think that I really highly recommend people everyone basically to ex try out independent research or intermentor and you know find a topic they really enjoy and go in depth and really study it thank you that sounds really interesting i i hope when i was in high school i had the experience like that and for me in my high school we just really focused on academics only so mm -hmm. that's definitely i think cause a shadow in our future career because we just don't have the opportunity to explore something different from what we prepare and uh, I really appreciate that perspective. So yeah. for your high school, have you, have you ever experienced cyberbullying? And if not, do you have your friends experience that? How do they overcome that? Yeah, so personally for me, I didn't really experience any cyberbullying throughout my high school career, but I definitely know of instances where, you know, either friends or just people that I knew just, they thought they were playing around and they thought they were a joke, they were really hurting someone. And I think that, uh, mental health in general, I'll, I'll get to that later, I think, but mental health is just something that's not really focused and emphasized in Howard County public school system, and I think that's something that needs to change, and I think for as regards to handling cyberbullying, I'm not sure there's a concrete way, but I really hope that right now, with these social events going on, that people, especially teenagers our age, are basically, I hope that they're going to move away from, oh, the stigma that it's, oh, it's socially acceptable to bully and put down other people. And I think that teenagers, for example, on Instagram or in social media right now, they're preaching the importance of unity and inclusion. And I really hope that they take up that message and they take it up personally and they make changes in their own life to ensure that they abide by what they say and they promote these values and never try to hurt other people. I see. And I, I just really hope that, you know, we preach as a youth generation, we preach all these positive values. And I hope that it translates just to every portion of your lives and people realize that, that bullying is not okay. And that bullying, you know, has all these terrible consequences as a result. I see. So just be curious, like, which kind of social media do we have? Yeah, so students these days usually use Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, et cetera. And, you know, they're great platforms for um, spreading awareness and spreading, you know, social change. And I definitely see that, you know, with the recent events going on in the U.S. that, you know, teenagers are finally taking action. They're speaking mm -hmm. up. They realize that their voice has immense power and that they're finally utilizing it to, you know, see the change that they want to see. I see. Thanks. I, I, do, I think I have a Twitter, I have a Facebook, I have a personal blog website, then have, sometimes I use Instagram, mm -hmm. and, but I don't have what Snapchat. It's just, there are too many to handle. Yeah, and, that's... <laughs> and yeah. sometimes I watch TikTok shows as well. 
Yeah, yeah, and TikTok. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> okay, and my children like to watch that. So, Daddy, can I watch that? So I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you have any advice for incoming high school students? So, how do they go through the high school experience? Which kind of advice will be very valid? For example, they may hear something from their parents and their friends when they enter the high school, but some of them may be true, some may be not so true, unless you experience that, right? So mm -hmm. can you give some advice? Yeah. So one thing, one piece of advice that, for example, my parents always gave me is just, again, just do things that you're passionate about and just don't do things that just because it looks good on the resume. So. I think that I really value this advice because, you know, again, high school is a, really a time of exploration. We're just teenagers after all. We really don't know what we want to do for the rest of our lives. And that's why it's a really great avenue to just explore and have fun. And I also think that it's really important for high school students to just value their strengths and weaknesses and don't try to compare to self, themselves to other students. So, so everyone is unique and has their own, you know, benefits, all, all their own struggles, but also all their own knowledges. And it really does not do anyone's mental health any good if, you know, you wish you were as smart or as talented or as perfect as someone else. Because in reality, we're all different humans and we can't really be like that. And like I said before, I think it's really important to have fun in high school. So, you know, high school is four years of that will never really be replicated ever again. We we'll go off to college, it's sort of like high school, but you know, these years are special and unique and they're a time of exploration, like I said before. And I think that's why it's really good to just, you know, experience new clubs, go to sporting events, attend school events like dances, and just to meet amazing people in general and, you know, build connections that, you know, last for hopefully a very long time afterwards. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's really important to just, for example, not view your peers as, you know, like competition or like, uh, you know, curve killers, for example, just view them as, you know, great human beings who, you know, you can build those connections with and have fun with and, you know, enjoy the ride together. Exactly. I think it, the college is so big, so wide, right? There's no competition between your peers in the same high school or even yeah. in the whole school system. And everybody has their own position in the world, in the college, yeah. right? I, I totally agree with you on that. So how do you feel about college? And what's your career plan? Yeah, so I'm really excited for college. I'm just excited to, you know, meet a bunch of new people and just continue growing as a person and just, you know, experiencing new things. College is also a time of exploration. And I think after college, so I purposely, I, choose to ma I chose the major in economics and statistics because I think that it's a really valuable combination of, you know, more, a more theoretical field versus a practical application using statistics to, you know, real world situations. That, and I think especially it would be a very useful, you know, combination of majors in the finance industry. And for example, because you need the analytical skills, but you also need the strong fundamental knowledge of, you know, the economy. Mm -hmm. And within the finance field, I think I first want to enter investment banking and work at, you know, investment bank and maybe really eventually transition to working at a hedge fund or, you know, a private equity firm. And that's my career goals right now. You know, they're always subject to change. Sure, you know, I sure. can completely switch my major in college. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Okay, great. Good luck in your college. And uh, yeah, thank you. It'll be fun and it will be different. You will be mm -hmm. on your own, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Based on your high school experience, do you have any advice for Howard County Public School System, HCPSS? Which areas they should improve, they should change? Yeah, so I, I have a couple of things, I think. So okay. first I would say that HCPSS really needs to focus on the health and safety of their students. So for example, at River Hill, so we had a number of really terrible and really unfortunate events of for, unfold over you know the past year. And those weren't exactly the school's fault, but I felt that the response to these events was still inadequate and that schools really don't do a good enough job of ensuring that if you need mental health um, care and if you need advice and counseling that you actually are able to get it. And you know that the student's well-being and happiness is priority number one over you know just achievement, I think. And also, I really wanna see more emphasis put on our curriculum to learn about different cultures and different histories that you know were previously not really brought to light. So considering that Howard County is such an ethnically and racially diverse county, 
I feel it is almost asinine that, you know, that we don't dedicate more time towards learning about the world around us and, you know, learning about injustices, systematic wrongdoings, and tragedies that have been a part of our history. So past, current, and, you know, future. And I think if we can really learn about these issues and if we can really, you know, understand each other better, that it's so much more valuable than just, you know, learning about, like, oh, memorizing history textbook or what happened in, like, 1912. It's so much better if we just learn these things and that, you know, in the future we can prevent events that are such as, like, what's going on right now and, you know, ensure that we build a more diverse, inclusive community as a whole. I see. Thank you very much for bringing that up. I think it's, that's definitely is, a, is an area the school should improve. And I think both the superintendent and the board members are dedicated to really diversify our curriculum, make sure our students are exposed to much diverse education in the school system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So do you have a closing remark? Um, yeah, so I think um, I just wanted to thank Dr. Wu for, you know, doing this interview. And I really think that the work uh, Dr. Wu is doing is like on the board of that is really important and vital to, you know, building up HGPSS. And I think overall, um, HGPSS as a whole has really provided me with a really, a lot of different opportunities to you know, explore myself and find what I'm interested in. And though it may have its flaws, I really value the eight years that I spent in the system and, you know, value all the teachers and connections I made. And I, I just wanted to add one more thing that mm -hmm. uh, for advice for students is just to be proactive. And for example, a lot of adults and professionals are willing to help, you know, high school students because they, they like to see that you're like taking initiative and, you know, doing the things you want to do. So if you want something, if you go get it and go ask for it. So for example, if you want to start a club, if you want to do research, if you want to, you know, host an event in school, just ask for it. And most likely people will be willing to help you out because, you know, people are kind and people, yeah, want to see someone else succeed and they want to help out students especially. I see. Thank you for sharing ex your experience. So be proactive, take initiative, probably self-motivated a little bit, right? Concentrate yeah. when needed and yeah. uh, try to learn each other. I think that's definitely a great advice for our incoming high school students. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. And please subscribe to Dr. Chow's YouTube channel. I really hope this kind of interview will help you to understand the student life in our public school system. And their advice will be helpful for you for your high school career. And thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.